So long-term androgen priming, does it work? Now this study on the long-term effects of intra-ovarian androgen priming in patient classified as poor responders on the Bologna criteria undergoing in vitro fertilization or in IVF. And what is the summary of this study? The study was aimed to investigate whether the effects of eight weeks of intra-ovarian androgen priming on ovarian reserve parameters in the Belonga criteria in poor responders patients undergoing IVF. What was the methodology? And it included 30 patients aged 18 to 41 who met the Belonga criteria for poor responders, priming of with low dose recombinant human chorionic gonadotropin, recombinant HCG, 260 international units every second day, plus letrozole 2.5 milligram a day, both for eight weeks. And the priming stopped on the first day of ovarian stimulation. The primary endpoint was that the serum AMH levels, a concentration eight weeks after priming. So what were the results? AMH decreased from the baseline to eight weeks, indicating no improvement in ovarian reserve. The antral follicle count remained stable throughout the study, and hormone levels such as testosterone, progesterone, estradiol, and HCG did not show any significant changes during the, the priming. Only one clinical pregnancy was achieved, which ended in a miscarriage. The conclusion was the long-term Androgen priming did not enhance ovarian reserve parameters and reproductive outcomes in Belonga poor responder criteria. This study suggested that the current protocol should not be used in clinical practice without any modifications. So now let's look at the logic. The logic behind this study is in patients who are poor responders often have a low response to stimulation, produce less eggs, indicating that the Androgens may enhance follicular responsiveness to stimulation, leading to better outcomes. Now, what is the hypothesis? The researchers hypothesized that long-term androgen priming could boost the residual follicular pool to improve follicular response during stimulation. By administering recombinant HCG and letrozole, the study was aimed to increase the local androgen production inside the follicles and the conversion of androgens to estrogens, thereby potentially enhancing follicle development. Now the findings, the lack of significant changes in hormone levels and ovarian reserve parameters suggest that the chosen protocol was ineffective. The study highlights the need of further research and potential modifications to the androgen priming approach, especially in poor responders. This, in summary, this study provides insight that treating poor responders and underscores that we need more research looking at the protocols, looking at improving the chances of pregnancy. Thank you.